Let's take a look at a variety of relative extrema problems. For this first one, uh, well, for all of them, they're asking you to find the relative extrema if they exist. And we're going to have one where we have a function that does not have extrema. And so we take a look at this first guy. And for him, we're going to need to take the derivative first. We do that. Then we set it equal to 0 to find the critical values. And you take each property, zero property, and set each one equal to zero. That gives you the critical values. Then you set up your number line. Don't forget to put that derivative on that number line and name it. And then the critical values have the dotted lines. And in between there, you do test values to test whether it's positive or negative in each of those slots. Uh, for f of zero, we need the y values then. So we go find them after we fill this in. So for here, we have increasing, decreasing. That's going to give us a relative max here. Decreasing, increasing, that's going to give us a relative min here. And we do put it in answer in sentence form. So we have a relative max of 1 when x is 0. I see that get cut off. And then we also have a relative min of negative 3 when x is 2. For the next one, we do it much the same way. We do get an extra critical value, though. Here's the function. Take the derivative using the power rule. Set it equal to 0 to get those critical values. And you have to factor. When you do that, you get a difference of two perfect squares here. And so you're going to factor that. 0 property gives you three zeros, which are the critical values. You're going to put these three things on the number line with dotted lines to separate the intervals. Then you test values in between. And when you do that, we see this function is coming down, up, down, up. And that means we have a relative min here and here. We have a relative max here at 0. We need to find the y values. That's what's happening down here so that we can name those solutions. So that means we have a relative max here at 0 of negative 8 at x equals 0. We have two relative mins. Both of them have the same y value. So you can put them together, relative mins of negative 9 at these two x values. Remember, we're pulling these relative max and mins off because we're showing this function here by testing the derivative. Slope of all the tangents are negative, means it's coming this way. Slope of all of the tangent lines here are positive, they're coming this way. That gives us a relative min that's someplace in between there, here at negative 1, we have to have a minimum value. Look at the next one. We do have to use the quotient rule for this one. When we do that, we have p and q, so we use just apply the quotient rule. Now we have to find out when that derivative is equal to 0. Well, when is a fraction equal to 0? When the numerator is 0. So set the numerator equal to 0. So when the numerator equals 0. Solve it like we were solving up here above, factoring it. Then take each of these. We're going to factor this guy one more time and then take each value and set it equal to 0. When the negative 4 gets set equal to 0, that's never true, so we throw that out as a, as a value that really was just a common factor to everything. So we have two critical values, dotted lines, test the intervals, what happens, negative, positive, negative. That means we have a relative min here at negative 1, and we have a relative max here at 1. Find the y values and then name your solution. The next one's more interesting, and on this one it's interesting because we can't factor this guy. We take the derivative, we want to set it equal to 0, and then we go to factor, and you can brute force it, you'll find that it's not factorable. So we use the quadratic formula, ABC, B squared minus 4AC is the discriminant, what goes inside. And when we find that, it's a negative 24. And what that means is you're trying to take the square root of a negative number, which means you have no real solutions. No real solutions means that the first derivative is negative 0, which means we have no relative extrema. So we say that no relative extrema since the first derivative cannot be equal to 0. For the next page, go ahead and skip number 5. And let's go ahead down to number 6 then. And when we do that, we still do the same thing, take the derivative of each piece, and then we're going to set each one equal to 0. I see we're missing that 0 here, 0, 0. And then we take each factor and set it equal to 0. So 12x gives us 0, 
This guy gives us negative 2, so does this one. So although there's three factors with variables, we only get two critical values. Put them on the number line, name, them, name this f prime, and after you have that, you pull off those values. Look, it's going down, down, and then up. So here, nothing is happening at negative 2. Instead, what we have here is at 0, something interesting is happening. It is a relative min. So we have a relative min of 32 at x equals 0 because this is our point. For the next one, let me go ahead and add those pieces. This is f prime. This should be at 0. And so we take the derivative, set it equal to 0, factor it. You get just one critical value of 100. That's here splitting the number line. Test the values, positive, negative. That gives us a relative max here. Go find the y value. So we have a relative max. If you're asked for a point, you say point. If not, you actually have to write it out. Relative max of at x equals, so this is a y value, is the x value. And there is no relative min, as you saw up above. We had one, but not the other. So in other words, with respect to this problem, so when you have one that isn't just an equation or function and it's got then some uh, sense-making problem to it, you can write your solution with respect to that, and it's the firm can maximize its sales by spending $100,000. We only have 100 here for our critical value, but X is in thousands of dollars, so it's $100,000 in advertising to get 9988 in sales. So that's it. Hope you're having a great day.